Now the X7 is the ultimate expression of what a BMW SUV should be. So you should expect an uncompromised experience in terms of the space and practicality that you want from a three row SUV, as well as the latest in tech and creature comforts. And with this new facelifted X7, how does it manage this while still retaining that distinct driving character that everything with a propeller on the bonnet should have? BMW says that the split headlamp design is meant to differentiate its topmost offerings from the rest of the lineup. This works quite well in the case of the new 7 series, which was always designed to carry this look. Do you think some of that effect is lost with this new X7? Sure, it'll still draw glances like you want it to, but the shiny grille and less cultural bodywork don't fully gel with it. Still, there's a definite dose of aggression with the new blacked out sections in the bumper which continues to the sides as well with the 21-inch M Sport wheels with a simple but athletic look. We also like the way the bodywork widens from below the glass area onward, giving the X7 quite a committed stance for a large functional SUV. Also nicely executed are the footboards. They blend in naturally, aren't intrusive and actually make getting in easier. The mildly revised rear section of the X7 is less controversial in our book. The wide lighting has been lightly revised to carry the new 3D L-shaped light signature, while there's a more aggressive bumper design highlighted by a chunky set of exhaust tips. The split bootlet design remains. It adds quite some functionality considering there's a fair amount of space for small bags with all the rows up. The power functions make it especially simple to fold down third row to carry larger items. Now, if you know what BMW has been doing with its models lately, whatever has happened in this facelift to the X7 will be of no real surprise to you too. So to start with, the main change is quite apparent. It's this huge curved display where you have a 14.9 inch central touchscreen and a new 12.3 inch driver's display. And there's also a head-up display now, which is quite functional. But beyond that, the general design of the dashboard hasn't changed. But like in the X5 and the i7, you now have this new design for the sort of central panel with this ambient lighting motif which like we also mentioned in x5 review looks a bit out there at first but at night with the whole ambient lighting package it works just fine now again same with these vents now they are nice with the minimalistic design but again like we noticed earlier they don't quite fit in with the very high level of fit and finish and textures and materials that bmw uses otherwise in the cabin the iDrive 8 infotainment carries on with its smartphone-like widget-based layout. You still have to deal with the slightly convoluted menus and climate controls in this particular example, but the updated iDrive 8.5 will eventually roll out to these SUVs via software updates. That said, this older setup with the new toggle type selector that the X7 now gets and with the crystal rotary dials and hard buttons for the major menus is still the best interpretation of this operating system we've seen. Practicality is well taken care of too inside the X7. Aside from some small spaces in the central tunnel, you have deep door pockets and well-placed cup holder. Now it's in the second row of the X7 is where you realize where all the extra money over say an X5 has gone. And broadly, at least in perspective of this segment, you will not be disappointed. You had captain seats in this X-Drive 40D M Sport variant. And yeah, like the front seats, they're very well done up. You have quite a bit of under thigh support, the cushioning is just right. It's got a nice contouring to it. So you're held in place while traveling. So even when the car say cornering, you'll still be held in place with these good side bolsters with a lot of support, a nice soft headrest. And yeah, of course, in terms of space, I've pushed this seat as far forward as possible. Maybe a boss function like how you have in quite a few SUVs nowadays would have helped. But as it stands, this is, as you can see, there's more than enough leg room and a reasonably good amount of headroom. And now to come to the amenities. Now, of course, you have this party trick. You can't miss this and it never gets old. This and you can also control the sunroof, which, by the way, has those illuminations right in it. So it will look really quite special at night. Then, of course, you have the usual AC vents in the pillars right here. There's a four zone climate control and a separate one behind, like we'll just show you. Two chargers here, a 12 volt power outlet and these cup holders now they are placed a bit lower but you will still be able to reach it it shouldn't be a problem now to be honest we've been a bit spoiled by how feature rich mainstream cars have become so we can't help but notice that there isn't a ventilation function here 
or maybe even an Ottoman, but that's really pushing it. Very few cars at this price point in the luxury segment offer it. But what you do get is quite a good recline angle. So even if you want to rest, there's quite a bit of comfort in the X7. The blinds can also be controlled by the driver who can also move the seat quickly forward for easier access for the rear passengers via special controls on the door card. Other features include full LED lighting, heated and cooled front seats, 16-speaker Harman Kardon audio, wireless standard auto and Apple CarPlay, wireless charging, and an augmented display being the highlight. Now this is with a reasonable amount of space for the second row passenger and you realize that for me, I'm not a very large adult. For me, it's perfectly fine. I won't be very comfortable over a longer journey, but otherwise it's fine. Yes, there is some space to put your feet in. Although this sort of trail in the middle gets in the way, but you can manage somehow. And yes, like most of these third rows, we could have done with a slightly more under thigh support. But like I said, over a longer journey or two or three hour journey, you should be comfortable, even if you're an adult. But you still have quite a bit of luxury even here, and you know that you're in the top-notch BMW SUV, you have a separate sunroof just for this row, which is really quite special, a separate climate zone, vents here and cup holders, of course, and also a hook and a charger for you. So in terms of amenities, you're pretty well covered. As for safety, you get some degree of ADAS functions like a collision avoidance system, lane departure warning and driver attention function. You also get a crisp set of 360 degree cameras and hill descent control among other things. Start driving X7 and you know soon enough that a bit more thought has gone in for even the front seat passengers in what is essentially a big luxurious SUV focused on the rear passengers. So the bonnet itself, it's slightly high up, especially in comparison to the X5, and the dash too is slightly placed higher. But you sit in that similar, quite a high position, even for an SUV, so, but you still have that sense of being cocooned, of, you know, the car wrapping itself around you, which immediately makes you comfortable. And then there is, of course, the size of the car, but what you realize in, say, a less crowded road is that it seems to shrink around you. You only notice its girth, so to speak, in very tight traffic situations where sneaking around is still quite tricky. And then you have those great BMW seats with this whole list of adjustments. So not just extendable squabs, but you can also adjust your side bolsters and angle the seat top half of the back, forward and back. So finding a nice driving position is very, very simple. And tying in with this quite cozy sense is Again, the refinement. You have no way really of saying that this is a diesel. It grumbles a bit, say just above idle, but right now when we're cruising quite calmly, there's really no way to tell that this is a diesel. And again, you have that, that really quite exciting piped in audio. So when you do start going a bit faster, again, it's sort of egging you on as the driver. A significant change with this update to the X7 is the new engine. The 3 litre inline 6 diesel is now at a higher state of tune, making a significant 340 PS and 700 Newton meter. There's now also 12 PS and 200 Nm of mild hybrid assistance. We also said this for the new X5, but the X7 further moves the post forward in terms of the excitement you can expect from a diesel. The electric assistance makes for a flat, progressive supply of torque in any situation, but more impressive is this motor's responsiveness. It's quite eager to rev out which helps extract even more of the torque available. Needless to say, the X7 is brisk by any standard, as the 0 to 100 kmph time of 5.7 seconds suggests. But you will especially like the way it seems to not run out of steam well past triple digit speeds. As always, the 8-speed ZF automatic complements the engine well. With the 48 volt system filling any gaps in power delivery, you barely notice it function. Usually, there's enough torque to not need too many downshifts when you want to make an overtake, but in the sportier mode, the gearbox becomes quite responsive to heavier throttle inputs. Maybe even too much so in the Sport Plus mode, this drivetrain adds over the 30D iteration of this motor. 
the gearbox will choose the lowest possible gear and then snap through gears quite aggressively for what is still a family SUV. But really if I had to pick one big highlight for the X7, it's the way it handles. To be honest, it feels no bigger than an X5 or maybe even an X3. That's how well BMW managed to tune this air suspension. So yeah, it'll still turn in with that very confident manner. It'll tell you exactly what the front is doing. You know when you're pushing a bit too hard and maybe you should back off a little bit. The steering, again, it's been sorted out. It's not overtly light. It's just correct with just the right amount of heft and directness. And you again get that very balanced sense that you want from BMW with that 50-50 weight distribution and those really wide tyres. And there's that sense of a great amount of grip. So around hairpins, like you just saw, it's very confident. Even the body roll for something this large, it's well controlled. Of course, it will lean, but it's never alarming or never, you know, taking away from the driving experience. Now compared to the X5 that we drove very recently, it seems the suspension is slightly, very marginally firmer. But again, it's a minor difference that you won't really notice in isolation. So what you still get is that really great damping. So rough patches, yeah, you feel them a touch more in this, but it's never uncomfortable. You still have that soft edge to it. So you're never jarred by anything that the road throws at you. Of course, with these big 21 inch wheels, you have to be careful of those big potholes. But other than that, again, it's a very comfortable car. And then this, of course, again, gets better at higher speeds. But you also notice that this slightly longer wheelbase on the wider track gives this X7 a great amount of high-speed stability. So you have that very planted, that very solid feeling, way past triple-digit speeds. So when you do the long distances that this diesel is very well capable of, the X7 is a truly comfortable machine, even when you don't want to take things hard and fast, when you want to just relax, you're on a road trip or something, or an office trip. It'll do that job perfectly as well. Priced at rupees 1.53 crore, the BMW X7 is about as complete a package as you might find at this price. Surprisingly, it's no less agile than its smaller sibling. The diesel powertrain is efficient but still exciting enough to extract the most out of this package. But this big BMW also does the luxury bit very well. The looks may not sit with everyone, but the plush cabin and the space and practicality on offer in the second and third rows are hard to argue with.